day three. Boys Nation, good morning. A Sunday morning, nothing better than getting up in the morning, a little coffee, some stuff, and talk some Cowboys football. So, again, welcome to the show. Make sure if you guys are just hopping in, hit that subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. I see the chat's getting going, so good morning to everybody. And it's been a little too long since we had my man Greg in the cave, but, uh, you know, Sunday morning was our thing, and then we hit the offseason. I'm like, man, I hadn't seen that. I hadn't talked to Greg in a while. i got to reach out. So, Greg, welcome back in the cave, and I'm so glad you're here. How you doing this morning? Doing good, man. Good, so good to see you again, Mike, and get together and holler at you about the, about the Cowboys and what we're going to be doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, there is, Well, I don't know if they're doing anything. I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you know, know. You wish they'd be doing – we'd be doing something, but – what is uh, and good morning to Troy, Chris, Vince, 808, uh, cuts everyone in here this morning. See, they, we got Birds. people, who don't, they don't sleep in, they they get up, and, and we made it a little later now, did a little 10, 10 a.m. my time, 9, 9 a.m. central. So, there it is. There's a cuts by Jones koozie. So, what is your you know, we hadn't talked since all this stuff. So, what is what's what's your thoughts on the Cowboys today? Are you in panic mode? Are you in hey, let's just relax a little bit let's let things play out a little bit more what's your thoughts well at first I was stunned extremely stunned because uh and then I said something's going on either they got some kind of master plan going on that we don't know about or somebody's making a big mistake and then I said wait a minute let me go back and look and see how much cap space we got and I said "Uh uh-oh we're in trouble and when I realized we weren't picking up anybody and we didn't get Henry and then I heard no contact by the Cowboys, just total silence, nothing on ESPN, nothing on, on Stephen A., nothing anywhere about the Cowboys. And when the analysts start talking about the Cowboys are, 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 are out of there and, and the Cowboys are AWOL, I said, something is wrong. Yeah, yeah. And let me just, I'm just giving a holler to our people on Instagram. I put a little note in there because on Instagram, I can't, I don't see you guys in the chat. So the only way to chat is to get in YouTube and then we can see you. But, you know, the thing with the cap, it's, I always say it's all, you know, the cap to me is, you know, BS. We'll keep Mm -hmm. it, we'll keep it uh, PG since we're Sunday morning. Um, But all they had to do is just get CD uh, a new contract, which he's going to need one. And the hey, the price never goes down. It only goes up. I mean, look what Ridley signed for. You imagine what CD is going to get. And then you, uh, and then they could have extended Dak, and that would have freed up a ton of money, and would have made life a lot easier if they wanted to be more aggressive in free agency. And I always said I didn't think they needed to go like crazy and and overpay for people, but I think some strategic signings would have made you feel a little bit better Mm -hmm. about what's going on on this season. So. I want to just kind of ask you and really ask the chat because it's every day that goes by, it seems like this Dak contract's not going to get done and potentially he's going to be playing on the, you know, on, on, on his last year. Mm-hmm. And do you think that's a smart move by the Cowboys to, to, to make him on a one year? You got him on a one year, you got McCarthy on a one year and it's kind of like a prove it year. I don't know if it's smart, but that's Jerry. I'm not shocked because this is what Jerry does. Jerry talks about, well, we're going to make a deal and uh, we're going to make it happen before the season starts and all this. But Jerry will drag it out to the last second because he wants all his options on the table and he wants to be able at the last minute, either pull the plug or go ahead with it and, and make that person sit back and have to really think about, man, maybe I need to go ahead and let them know right now I'm willing to take a cut or I'm willing to take it, take less money. And it would, Shocked me if Jerry Witten did a deal now. 
because that's unlike him. He drags it out to the last minute. Now, I'm sure Dak is more than willing to negotiate, renegotiate because he knows they need that. They need that extra cap space so that they can bring in some key players. Otherwise, everybody we get has got to come from the draft. And the shocker of shocks to me is when I heard Henry on an interview and they asked him, they said, what happened with you and the Cowboys? And he just calmly said, they never called me. They never called me. And even if we only had like maybe um, five million in cap space at that time or four million, Jerry could at least call and said, hey, just call and say, hey, listen, you know, our cap space. Can we do a one year deal with you yeah. with incentives? Because what he's getting at Baltimore versus a one year deal with Dallas, who he wanted to play with, would have been really good and lucrative for him in the future. But Jerry never crossed that bridge. And you never know what's on the other side of the bridge unless you attempt to cross it. And he yeah. won't taken it. He may have taken a one year deal for three million or 2.5 or something. But when I heard he never, we never called him, I said, they got a master scheme going on and they're going to shock us. Or oh, this all in is a is a ruse. Yeah. And, well, like I said, they could have easily created cap space. So the, the, the cap space, I'm not buying that. I'm not going to buy that, that they couldn't be active because they didn't have the cap. Because if they wanted to, they could have easily done it. Go look at Philly. Go look at these other teams that mm -hmm. paid their quarterbacks more than Dak. They were able to restructure the money, move things around. You could easily do it. They did it with Zach Martin to free up money. They they changed, you know, they picked up something or converted something on Dak's contract to free up a little bit of money. So I think this is strategic on, on the Joneses. They did not want to be active in free agency, and this was a way that they could use that as an excuse. Let's just say that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the – I wanted the Cowboys to go out and get a, the, the things I wanted. Veteran, all I asked for. I don't ask for much as a right. Cowboys fan. Yes. I asked for a veteran running back, yes, uh, a linebacker or two, yeah. defensive tackle, yeah. and and maybe a, an offensive lineman as depth. So yeah. I, you know, they got one out of four. They got one out of four, which isn't yeah. great. And it's twenty five percent. That made that doesn't make me feel good. So they're going to continue to what their philosophy has been in the past is the pressure's going to be on the draft picks, and that's yeah. what they're going to do. And you know, I I got the four pictures up. You got Parsons, Diggs, you know, Dak, and CD. They are the leaders. They are the face of the franchise. So it's really going to be incumbent on them to kind of the you got to create more accountability on the field mm -hmm. you got to create that leadership and you, you know I know you're not a born leader or you are a born leader it's not something you can you can just come become over time right but I think there is some leadership stuff I'm not real sure why the Cowboys have so much what I would say it seems like to me correct me if I'm wrong is the Cowboys I hate to say it are like a finesse team that's the worst thing you can ever say about a team I think Mm -hmm. uh, when they get punched in the mouth, they kind of retreat a little bit. And, and you heard, you know, Aaron Jones kind of talk about it um, in the Cowboys playoff in the pregame. He said, let's punch these front runners in the mouth. Yes. And I just think that's the mindset that teams have. That's that's the perception teams have on the Cowboys. And how do you change that? And I thought the way to change it is you got to you got to shuffle the roster. You got to bring some dogs in. Yes. I wasn't upset with really. Probably anyone they let go. Dorrance Armstrong might have been the one guy that I think he's underrated. I don't. I don't think he kind of gets the credit he deserves in, in Dallas. But was there? I mean, what's your thoughts on the mentality of the Cowboys and the free agents they lost? Did any of them kind of break your heart? The only one, no, none of them really broke my heart. But the only one that I wish we had hung on to for a while is Tony Pollard. Because we have nobody else back there. And if, if you're not going to go out there and get Henry, or you're not going to go back out there and get a beast, well, well, don't just vacate the house. I mean, yeah. period. And then count on the draft. But the mentality of the Cowboys, it goes back to the 70s. It goes back to the teams of the 90s. On the de Especially on the defense, we don't have that one authoritative figure that – a, a, a player, a player's player, but they know when they walk up to him to say something or they know to talk to him, don't take no BS because he's in it 
to get down in the mud, the dirt, the grit, the rocks, and he's in it for the right purpose. The rest of them don't do that. When something happens, they all look around at each other looking for somebody to be the leader. There is no leader. Michael Parsons, he's a leader in, in the sense that he's a dynamic player and he plays with his heart, but he's not that he's not that that critical thinking leader that the Cowboys need on that defense that everybody respects. And when he points like this, they know exactly what that means. They shiver in their boots, but not because they fear him, but because they respect him. We don't have that. Yeah. And then when Lawrence said what he said about, well, we were just burnt out and this and that. And I'm thinking, well, if anybody on the team who should take the mantle and be the one that everybody looks up to, it should be you. But by you saying that, you just cancel yourself immediately. Nobody's yeah. going to respect you as the, as the, as the, the, the super dog now after saying something like that. So linebacker, we got one, but everyone you name is exactly what I got on my list. I want linebacker. I want a couple of linebackers. I want a couple of uh, defensive linemen, an edge. I want a couple of offensive linemen. I want running back. And then if we get a cornerback here or there, that's good. But we need those bad. And if we go in the draft and that's what we're looking for, we pick 24th in like three rounds. Yeah. So now 24th. And there's linebackers. There's some good linebackers that get in the third, fourth, fifth rounds because you awkward, you can get a surprise sometimes. But we got to really do some homework and be scouting. And I hope our scouts are doing their job. Because what's going to hurt us, even though if they bring the skills and the talent, they don't have the experience. And the NFL is fast. So that first year could almost look like we're in a rebuilding age, I mean, stage. And after having a season like we had last year, I'd hate to see us look like we rebuilding. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I agree with Brian. I mean, can't re you know rely solely on the draft, you know, um, to fill holes and, and really the in free agency and Last year's draft, you're not going to hit all the time. I and mean, we've had some years where we hit a lot. And then we had some that, you know, last year really didn't hit much. You didn't get really right. anything out of Schoonmaker. Uh, Overshone showed promise, but obviously got injured. So really that's an incomplete. Mozzie, um, you know, defensive tackles never going to be, you know, they're not going to set the world on fire unless it's right. like Aaron Donald. But he's, he's one in a generational kind of guy. So Mozzie, but, you know, he lost a lot of weight. Was that because of, of some internal issues he's having? Or was that uh, Dan Quinn's philosophy? Then obviously he had some safeties playing linebacker. Mm -hmm. um, just really everything hurt. kind of seemed out of whack. So it's going to be interesting to see this draft. They have got, I mean, they got to hit home runs. And they got to hit yeah. home runs because they did nothing really in free agency. I think Kendricks was a good sign. He's a captain. Uh, he, he played with Zimmer under Zimmer for a while. So I think he's still got some gas left in the tank. And I think, you know, he's one of those guys that could be physical and, and hopefully maybe kind of get these guys going. So it's going to be interesting. There's still some guys, you know, left that you could pick up, but there's really, you know, the cupboards kind of, kind of getting yeah. bare in certain spots. So I would ask in the chat because I want y'all's opinion, especially, and, and, and as well as you, Greg, the offensive line. So if I were to say that Tyler Smith's going to go to left tackle, Bass is going to be guard, Hoffman is going to be center, Martin is going to be the guard, and then obviously Steele coming off a disappointing year, but hopefully that second year off injury, we, he can get back to where he was. I'm okay with that offensive line. I'm not as doom and gloom as some people are. Am I... Do I have rose-colored glasses on? Am I drinking the Cowboys Kool-Aid? Or, or, I mean, what do you guys think in the chat? And what do you guys, you know, what do you think, Greg, for our offensive line? That'll be, that. you know, it really we have no choice. Those guys have to step up. We got no choice. So those guys will get in there and they have to step up. And maybe when they saw the, the departures and they realized, you know what, we can't hide behind Smith anymore. Uh, you know, now we can't hide behind this starter. I'm it. And now that I'm it, I got to step up because if I don't step up, I'm out of here probably yeah. the next year. So they have to step up and they got to protect Dak. We can't have them running all over the place trying to uh, find a place, trying to find a, a space to throw the ball or something because then Dak can start throwing the interceptions. Those guys have to step up. The experience, I would rather, and I was hoping this, I would rather have experienced free agents and less draft picks this season but it's going to be the opposite. And the experience that these drafts, these draft picks don't have coming in and that first 
intimidation of shock because the, the game is so fast for them, they're going to have to adjust to that. And, you know, look at the fact that in linebacker, we had safety plan linebacker. We didn't have the defensive line like we wanted to help Michael Parsons on the bookends. And we still finished 12 and five. And we still got in the playoff. Can you just imagine if we picked up maybe three, three free agents, even two on all on defense and one as a running back, and then pick up these complimentary drafts? Who knows what the world is for us? I'm concerned about Philly, who's improving now. They had a low, you know, you win, you go to Super Bowl, sometimes you have a low year, and then all of a sudden you regroup. They're regrouping. Commanders are Dallas Cowboys part two. Because they're getting yeah. all our players, they're getting our they're getting all our scrubs. Uh, let's be honest. Yeah, well, but but you know, <laughs> but they still they still have that mentality. They're going to be hungry. They're playing against us. Dan Quinn knows our secrets, you know, so it, that little helps. And then the Giants, nobody knows where the Giants are right now, I just, and that's good because I don't care. I just don't want us to be at the bottom. And yeah. I hope that these um, free agents come in. I mean, not these free agents. These drafts come in and they show their potential right away. And who knows? One of them may be the dog. Yeah. One may come in being young and full of itself and say, listen, guys, I came here to, to feed my family, to take care of this. I love the game. Um, we got to step up. And they may look towards that one person. Yeah. I just yeah. don't. I, I, I would just say in the chat, obviously, uh, great comments. You know, my man, my man, Frank, hopefully we see you out at AT&T. We got we definitely, definitely got to party it up again. Had a good time. But he said if, if any of the offensive linemen I mentioned get injured. But, I mean, that's kind of being said for yeah. any team. I mean, if you start getting into your depth of offensive line, yeah, yeah it's going to be a problem. The thing I would say with Bass and Hoffman, they're both young. They showed something in the time, right, when Tyler was injured and when uh, Beatus was hurt, they'd come in, and, and I thought they showed something. So are they the answer? I don't know. I'm just saying for me, I think it, it's – I, you know, I, I'm not as doom and gloom on it. And I know Brian, you know, his comments, he'd, he'd rather have an all pro guard than a pro bowl left tackle. He'd leave Smith at guard. I don't necessarily agree with that, but respectfully disagree. Of course, I just think your left tackle is protecting your $300 million quarterback. So that's, you better have a good one. I'd much rather have Tyler Smith at, at, um, uh, and left tackle in a you know maybe a middle tier or or a pro bowl or you know a pro bowl guy at guard than than vice versa. Just my opinion. Now I did my mock draft. I did my mock draft, and I had us taking Jackson Powers Johnson from Oregon, the center. He fell. Uh, he was there, the best option in the first round. So that would solve uh, Frank's you know concern because I think if you look at the Cowboys offensive line, and I think Philly is going to figure this out and find this out next year. When you have a really elite center and the Cowboys had Travis Frederick, who was, I mean, he, he ran mm -hmm. that offensive line mm -hmm. and Kelsey obviously did the same for Philly for them years. Our offensive line kind of started taking step back when, when, when he, when he retired due to, yes. due to health reasons. Yes. And we haven't really replaced that. Biotish, has never lived up, you know. He, I don't want to say lived up because he wasn't a top pick or anything. He was, I think, he was third round pick. So I don't want to put it all on him. But he was never able to fill his shoes. Let's just say. Right, let's just right. be fair about that. So they, you know, maybe getting a, a center and 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 power seems to be like you know the a very highly rated. But again, you're counting on a rookie. You got to hit a home run. He's got to mm -hmm. he's got to live up to the hype. But if he does, maybe that helps solidify the offense. And then maybe you can maneuver some stuff if you wanted to keep Tyler, you know, a guard and and you, you know, you you get a, a you know left tackle. Maybe one of these guys can be left tackle, whatever it is. I still put Tyler Smith at left tackle. To me, left tackle is the most important position on that offense line because he's protecting the quarterback's blind side. So um, what's your thoughts on drafting uh a lineman, whether it be a tackle or a center? Well, I I hope in the first, and because the first and second round, especially the first round, um, if a big time running back is available, which I doubt by the time we get down to 24, then get him first. But if he's not available, concentrate on offensive line, defensive line, linebackers. Offensive line, defensive line, linebackers. We need them bad because we protect Dak, then we're in good shape. If we don't protect Dak, like one of the chat, one person in the chat said, if a deck's going to be sliced up like Swiss cheese, my concern is if we don't show up that offensive line and Dak has to be uh, sliced up like Swiss cheese, Dak's going to start getting rid of the ball and 
Sometimes it might be an interception. Dak won't be able to get rid of the ball. He's going to run. And all the blame is going to go on Dak because that's the first person you see. And it won't be necessarily his fault. It's just that he doesn't have the protection. But let's go offensive line, defensive line, linebackers. Offensive line, defensive line, linebackers in the draft right away unless a big-time running back is available first by the time we get down to our pick. We pick 24th in three yeah. rounds. That's close enough to be able to good, get a good, solid running back. Yeah. But definitely, definitely high enough to get some good offensive linemen, linebacker, and defensive linemen. But they have to do their homework. If they're not doing their homework and they're just freelancing, and we get somebody out there we think is good because Jerry wants to get them on the cheap, it's not going to help us. Protection, 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 and defense. And, yeah. and, and I know a lot of people may disagree with me, I know we won't get rid of them because we can't afford to get rid of anybody now and we're not going to be able to make a trade. But Lawrence, after what I heard about Lawrence, I'm telling you now, I am not a fan anymore. If we dump them, it wouldn't hurt me a bit. Um, yeah, that would be – I was going to look up uh, – I was going to look up the, the hit on that, the post-June. Uh, let me just see something. So, Tank, if you do a post-June cut, um, they would save ten million. Uh, they basically net four hundred forty-five thousand. He would cost. They could do that. Yeah. I personally, you know, I like Tank. I'm, I, I, I'm very. It was discouraging to hear what he said. I'm hopeful that maybe he was trying to cover up for somebody, but I would have just said nothing at all. Tank's a pretty tough guy, and he's always been, you know, a dog mentality. So I don't know what the whole thing was. I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt, but it was very disappointing you know, to hear him say that. And and I want to just jump back to in the chat. We had my delusional, uh, that, and I'm not saying he's delusional. That's the name he goes by. Dak delusional uh, fans with more excuses. So I'm guessing that might be my man Ultra because he's, he's definitely not a <laughs> Dak fan. Uh, it might be. If it is Ultra, say it's you. That way I know it's you. Um, now, again, here's the thing. Dak could potentially be playing on his last year contract, right? Could be a free agent. You got Trey Lance. This is not a popular opinion. Some are not. But my thing is, if you are not going to re-sign Dak or you're going to have him play on a one-year deal, prove it deal, whatever you want to call it, I'd cut him now. I'd take your losses. I would go ahead and play Trey Lance and roll the dice and see what happens. Now, I'm not a fan of that. I think Dak still gives the Cowboys the best opportunity mm -hmm. to win a Super Bowl next season. But if you're going to play games and you're going to kind of do this, I think the distraction and everything else that it's going to give the team, it's going to be kind of a, it's going to be a very difficult season anyway. So I'd much rather rip the bandaid off, see what you got in Trey Lance and just have at it and just go from there. So what's your, you know, what's your, what's your thoughts on, on that? And really in the chat as well. It, I mean, how, how, how much of an uproar would it be in Cowboys nation if they did it? And what are you thinking, Greg? So you're talking about this season? I'm talking about this year. They, yeah. got, they don't extend him. He's on a one-year deal, basically, and he's going to be a free agent. They can't They can't um, franchise him. Franchise, right. His contract, right? So he, he'll be free to negotiate with any other team. Um, so yeah, we, I, you know, I, all year you're dealing with it. Yeah, I, I don't feel good about that. I want I want Dak back. I want Dak fully – I want him fully knowledgeable of the fact that he's a starting quarterback – and that's who we want for now. Yeah, Dak's got his problems. But Dak, to me, is not the reason the Cowboys don't go further. People yeah. don't understand. We finish, we win a division, or if we didn't win a division, we still get in the playoffs with Dak. And that's what you want to do is get there first. But everybody has to do their job. Now, Trey, I'm curious as to how good Trey is. And if Jerry doesn't sign a contract, the extension, with Dak, and he brings Trey in. What I'm going to be sitting back thinking is, Jerry, look at the opportunity that you gave away by bringing Trey in and not playing Dak because you're not going to give him extension. This is last year. And you're basically telling Dak, we don't want you anymore. And if Trey all of a sudden doesn't show up or he doesn't become the diamond in the rough, now you're going to go back and put Dak out there and look, look at the mindset Dak has and look at what the team's going to be thinking because they're going to say, wait a minute, Dak's still here. He gives us our best opportunity. 
Jerry, you playing those games again. Here's your con job coming up again. So yeah. just go with Dak for this year because what's the worst can happen? If we don't do it this year and if Dak has a horrible year, then you can go ahead and move on. But don't move on before this last year is up. Let him prove himself. Let him play. And then later in the season, you say, oh, Dak is going to get us there. and this, Let's go ahead and do this contract. But you cut yourself off at the beginning of the race before it starts. And like you said, take the Band-Aid off and start over. I think that's going to be a disaster because it's an experiment that's going to definitely go wrong. We don't know what Trey is like. And, yeah. and let's just assume Trey comes in and lights it up. Okay. Can he be consistent year after year and lighten it up? And what are we putting around him to help support it? You know, he, uh, Jerry did the same thing with Dak. He lit it up that first year, told uh, told Romo, Romo said, well, Jerry, can't I even compete for the job? No, no, no. I got the shiny star. I'm moving on. Jerry does that a lot. Shiny penny, go with it. Get rid of everything else. Be smart. Got a shiny penny. Okay, I still can get something out of this player here. Let's get it. But I know what I got right here. So I got two bona fide. No, don't get rid of the bona fide and then go all in with this and it doesn't work. And now we're going out there getting uh, baseball players for quarterbacks. Yeah. So, no, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't want us to go that route. I think we're close. I really do think we're close. I just think we need to get those offensive linemen, defensive linemen, and linebackers. Because, Mike, look, look how well we did, despite all of the, the games we shouldn't have lost and this, this. Look how well we did with a safety as a linebacker. Yeah. Except Green Bay killed us, but – we, we 12 and five. We won the division, thanks to Philly. We went in the playoffs and we didn't have a serious bona fide linebacker, yeah. which we really need. And Tank wasn't that other edge rusher like Micah. And the offensive line with Tyron, Tyron getting hurt and, and we got replacements coming in and they and they did they did the Cooper Rush backup to hold us in the game as offensive linemen until Tyron got healthy enough to come back. So they did their job enough, but we still went 12 and five. We still got in the playoffs and, and still got a home game and had the opportunity, but yeah. then the, the tank ran dry. So keep Dak, give Dak on both sides of the field, the weapons we need to protect the weapons we need to attack linebackers to shore it up. And then let's see, how that turns out. And if yeah. that doesn't work, then we might have to start over. Yeah. And I would say this is when it look when you know, looking at this team, my concern, that's why I, I, I me personally, if you're gonna ask me, I would I would extend Dak. I would get that thing going, free up the money. And I that that's me. Because again, like you said, I think Dak is a top 10, top mm -hmm. eight, top six, whatever you want. I think after Mahomes and a, and maybe Burrow when he's healthy. I think you can jumble the rest of them up, and it's it's whatever your flavor is. But all of them need help. I mean, yes. all quarterbacks yes. need help. Yes, and except for Mahomes, uh, but all other quarterbacks <laughs> need help and need talent around. Them. And they didn't do. I said it. You guys can go check back at the tape. I said it in the beginning of the year. I said it in, in preseason. I said it. The Cowboys are making a mistake at running game. You have to be able to run the football, and I did not believe that Tony Pollard could be the bell cow, could be the one. And then they had Tony Pollard, they had Rico, and they had Deuce, and it was like, okay, Deuce can be a little little scat back. He could be a little yeah. special gadget guy. Um, he's never going to be a one. He's really never. I don't think he'd be a two. Mm -hmm. I think he's just one of those special backs that you could use, like a Darren Sproles and things like helping special teams. So. They they didn't set themselves up for success because of the running game. Then I'm like, okay, well, they'll get a veteran. They learn their lesson. They'll go get a veteran and draft a guy, and then that, that'll work, right? And let Pollard go or bring Pollard back with a veteran, like a, a Derrick Henry, and mm -hmm. run it that way. But, I, I mean, from the cap number, they, they were never going to do that. So they didn't get a veteran. They got uh, Rico back, who a lot of people, let's just be honest, I was one of them that said Rico should have been getting – more of those carries, more of the short yardage, more yeah. the goal line, more yeah, kind of find it out. So now he gets that opportunity. So now you've got some running backs in the draft. Now the hot name, you know, for the Cowboys is 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 obviously uh, Trey Benson. Benson, and we yeah. saw what he did to our Hurricane. So we respect him. We respect Trey. Uh, you know, Bucky Irvin's a guy that that from from Oregon that's getting some mm -hmm. love. 
You got Blake uh, Corum from from Michigan, smaller, you know, smaller in stature, mm -hmm. but he's 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 a he's like a bowling ball, right? He's still 213 pounds. You know, Jalen Wright, and then the one that people, you know, obviously because he's a Texas guy uh, with Brooks. And there's a lot of love there, but he's coming off an injury. But I was reading where the Cowboys medical staff has been kind of in contact with them for the last 60 days or so. So you're going to go running back. You got to get a running back. Yeah. I said they should have drafted, you know, a running back higher last year. They didn't yeah. forget it. You can't F around with running back. Now you're going right. to have to take a running back second, no later than third round. Yes. Because if they come out of this draft without a running back, you might as well just Call it a day. I'd yeah. say go ahead and let Dak go and 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 blow this thing up because they're gonna have no running game. So. You know, and and Mike, just think about this now. We are all diehard fans. We are all in for Dallas all the time, and we're not in the organization. But I, I don't understand for the life of me, and there is no strategic way of explaining it that makes sense. Jerry and every, all of us in the world knew that Pollard, as good as he is, cannot be the number one running back because his, his role as a running back was that running back that comes in after the beast has torn everybody up and then he can run through and scatter. And why in the world did Jerry, Steven, or whoever in there think that we could just simply go with Pollard? We all can see that Pollard is not that tough that type of running back to be the beast so what was it that they were thinking that we can go with Pollard as number one which I never can understand and these are people that are invested in the game the, he owns the team they're the strategic thinkers they're the scouts everybody in the world knows that Pollard could not be the number one quarterback and if Dowdle had been used a lot more to replace the beast to be the beast, then I can understand it. Yeah. But we didn't do that. And no. And now I, I think with the Cowboys getting it, and and I think where Jerry is is when they pay the guy, they're gonna play the guy over the other guy. Cause I I'll, I'll use the example of the year before. I mean, Pollard had the hot hand and then they went back to Zeke. When mm -hmm. you know, I, I think when you have a two running back system, you play the hot hand. And I don't care what they're making, you know, but Zeke was the one who had that heavy contract and they just kind of force fed Zeke. And even when Zeke was hurt, remember there was one game yeah, where like yeah, Zeke was, had to, yeah. and they he still could, and everyone and their brother could see that he wasn't able to cut. He wasn't right. doing this. And they're like still doing, it. I think with Pollard last year was the same way. Cause I go back to that dolphins game and I just remember seeing Pollard getting taken down by the, by the cornerback or the safety with one arm on the goal line. It's like, you're yep. that close, mate. Go with, with Rico. At least he's, he seems yeah. to be a tougher inside runner than Pollard. Maybe I'm wrong. Again, I, I'm not there. No, that's I, right. I don't that's claim right. to be an expert, but that's what I'm thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pa a Pollard's a toothpick compared to, to a Dowdle or a Zeke. And yeah. I just, if they if Jerry's doing that because he paid the man a lot of money, so he's gonna force feed, then that means you're not all in. That yeah. means you don't care to do whatever it takes to win. I don't care if I got a fifty million dollar running back out there, and then I got somebody else that's paying getting nine hundred thousand a year, but this is the one doing the job. Okay, well I'm gonna pay the fifty million, let him play. But damn it, I'm all in. Nine hundred thousand, you gonna get the ball. You gonna yeah. get the ball, and you gonna bust that line. And at this point, those running backs that you talk about in the top, this this. There's 12, it's a bunch of them, but I only looked at the top 12 and I saw the names you were talking about. I don't see the ones that you talked about. I don't see them being available when we get down to 24. Trey oh, Benson no, is, those running no. backs to be, those running Maybe backs, no. they're going to be second, third rounders. They're not yeah, so we're looking at, to go in the draft early. We're, running looking back. At, we're looking at either 13 through 24 or either later. Those no. are those players, but uh, those ones that you mentioned, Man, like I said, if any one of them, any one of those beast uh, running backs, rookies is available by the time we get 24, then jump on them right away, and then we can get the offensive line, defense, all that. But I, they're not going to be available. So a Oh, no, back no, Greg, Greg, the draft, the way these guys are now, I'm telling you, you're a running back, I don't think a running back will be taken in the first round this year. There's not – I don't think one will be taken in the first you round. You don't think before. Trey's going to get taken in the first round? No. they have, Every mock draft I've seen and, and, and I've done is have him going – no higher than two, but mostly in the third round. Well, like, we got 
then that means we got an opportunity to get one of these guys. There. No, they do. No, that's yeah. right. They're gonna they could get one of the four. They have they can't wait past the third round. I think that's oh, no, the, the third round. No. And then hopefully in the fourth round of my mock draft, I got James Williams, you know, from the U because I yeah. tell people no one wants to listen, but you'll understand. Yeah. The Cowboys won Super Bowls when their team had guys from the U on it. They ain't won no Super Bowls without them. So I'm just sure saying, did. you know, we, we have the Jerry curse. We have the, the deal with the devil they say he made. Yeah. My thing is the curse is they don't have no one from the U on the team. That's right. And that's causing some some bad karma. We got to get that fixed. But James Williams is a ball hawking safety, hard hitting safety. I think we still, I, I like, I think. Wilson's actually going to do pretty well in, in Zimmer's system because Zimmer likes to blitz the safeties. I think that's what, you know, Wilson does the best. He's best, you know, at the line of scrimmage. But I think James Williams, if he were there in the fourth round, I'd be pretty happy if they if they snagged up my man from the U. I'd be very yeah. happy. Because we got – there's um there's 12 players uh, from the U that's going to be in the draft. And they, they range all over the field um, that are going to be available. And his running back, like you said, that was uh, – <laughs> Well, Williams, I don't see him on there for running back. No, he's uh, safety. No, he's a safety. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's our safety. Him on there. Were the, yeah. They were the yeah. duo. Um, we don't have any running backs out there. No. James, is, James is definitely on there. Defensive lineman, guard, center, wide receiver, linebackers, linebacker. And you're right. We need some people from the U. Because you got to understand, see, I was stationed at Homestead for like six or seven years. So I was right down there with the Miami players. And my, and my cousin played with the uh, Canes back in the day with Jim Kelly. I seen the mentality. I know where these boys come from, where they live, and the hunger and the passion they have to get out of there and to play the game. That's their ticket. To them, that's their ticket out of Liberty City, out of uh, Goose, out of uh, Miami down there. And these boys have the passion. They get the opportunity in the NFL, they're going to play. Seattle, yeah. we got players. We got a few players in the NFL now that if you're not a U fan, you wouldn't be paying attention. But they're still there. They're still well, no, that, well, that's the funny thing with Miami is like you you look at you you look at DJ Dallas. I mean, DJ Dallas yeah, DJ. signed a free agent. I wouldn't mind to see him if he would have went to Dallas. He's always run well, but you know, in Miami, they didn't. I mean, the team just didn't utilize their talent. The coaches didn't utilize their talent as well as they should have. But when these guys get to the NFL, they have you know they have solid careers. They 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 don't have the guys like the Michael Irvins and the Andre right, Johnson right. and Reggie Wayne's. Right. I think that's coming with this swing, but that'll be for another day. That'll be for another yeah. show. And yeah. Greg and I talk a lot of canes, but I'm just saying is they're gonna have to they're gonna have to hit some home runs, not yeah. doubles. Not singles, right? They got triples and home runs. They got to hit in this draft, and the, a home run they have to hit is going to be with one of these running backs because they're mm -hmm. going to have to draft a runner. And that, and I know uh, Chris in the chat he talked about you know the big running back from from Wisconsin. He's a yeah, he's a big dude. He's you know like a Derrick Henry type. So and I'm fine with that. Whatever they feel, whoever the the scouts feel is going to be the best for their system. Right. That's what I, you know, they better be right, is all I'm going to say. They well, better be ask, right. They let can't. me ask you this, Mike. Let me ask yeah. you this. What do you feel like? Do you feel we should probably look at bringing Zeke back? I think we can get. I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it because I think Zeke, you're going to get him really cheap. Yeah, not going to be a big he 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 knows, you know, right. He, he's a locker room guy. People love him. And he's a good, you know, and he's he can be his career. I don't know if you remember the the uh, Ingram from Alabama who was yeah, drafted yeah, yeah, in the yeah, first yeah, yeah. round. And then as years Mark went Ingram. on, he kind of was that, you know, short yardage and goal line guy for the for the Saints and actually had a Pro Bowl career. Even doing that with yeah. Camara, they kind of teamed up. I believe it was Camara was there at that time, if my memory's right. But, came um, later. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Whatever, yeah. whoever the running back was that those two were kind of tied yeah. to. I think Zeke can have that kind of career where he gets a certain, you know, he's not going to get a yeah. ton of carries, but he's going to be your third and one guy. He's going to be your inside the five guy. And when, if he gets hot, then you give him the ball, right? That's, yeah. that's why I say is you got to feed the hot hand. If the running back is eating and going, man, you got to keep feeding them. And I think that Cowboys, they get in this this system of running backs where it's I'm going to give this guy the whole series, then I'm going to give this guy two series, mm -hmm. then we'll go back to the other one. I, look, man, if it, it's like um, the playoff game that I was going back to with Zeke and Pollard, the playoff game 
uh, one of the San Francisco ones where the only touchdown that we got is when Pollard uh, was in the game and, and scored. It's like, well, why aren't you guys putting him back in, putting him back yeah. in, putting him back in? And then they didn't, they, they, they never did it, you know? And um, it, you know, I, I don't understand the thought process with that because I think running back is a feel, man. If they get that feel, it's almost like in basketball when the man, if you got a hot shooter, man, you just got to keep feeding them. I think if a running yeah. back, it's the same way as if you get that running back going, I think you got to keep feeding them. So I wouldn't have an issue with Zeke. I, I, I know some people in the chat talked about it. Some may not like the move, but I think at this, I, it, 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 at this point, I think, um, yeah, as long as he understands he's not the lead back, it's by committee. Right. I think he would because that's the way it was in, in New England. That's what he did. And, and you know, Zeke coming, Zeke would like love it. to come back to Dallas. He'd be motivated. He'd want, to, he'd want to try to restore his glory of playing that running back. And I think he would come back. He would work out like you wouldn't believe in the offseason. He would be ready to play, and he would give us everything he got because – after some per certain period of time, I kind of felt he became complacent. He got paid. He was playing. Well, yeah, he got hurt, too. And, and running back's lifespan isn't that long in the NFL. But I think at some point he kind of got a little complacent. But yeah. sometimes you take a person out of that picture, wake them up, and then all of a sudden you say, you know what, we're going to give you one more chance to come back. That remotivation when he comes back is something else, and it takes him to a different level. And Zeke can do what we need back there. And then we still pick up running back in the draft and then if that running back is is the man we still got the one-two punch because you still have to be honest when you play against Zeke but I don't want us to get a running back the size of Pollard I want somebody maybe the size of Zeke somebody that's got a little muscle and not just a north and south runner Dowdle I like Dowdle Dowdle's a puncher but Dowdle is a north and south runner we need yeah. one with a little finesse a little jilt to break yeah, some like that, like a Trey, like Trey or, or Brooks are really those two. Yes, you know. yes, yes. We need no. something like that. And then we get that, and then we bring Zeke back, and Zeke will come back cheap. I'm pretty sure he would because, I, yeah. you know, he's with another team, and it's it's kind of funny when you go to another team, you don't really know people. You really want to be here, and you feel a fish out of one. He's probably thinking, he's probably contemplating, John might retire. And he actually played, I mean, he in the opportunities I watched, because I'm a Zeke fan, uh, yeah. my daughter, that's her favorite player, she's a Zeke fan, so we watched, we kept an eye on Zeke in New England, and, and the opportunities he had, he still played, you he know, did. he played well with the oppor you know, limited opportunities, but then when yeah. he had opportunities to get more, he did it, so... Um, yeah, and, and we're not paying Zeke four million this year. Right. He counts against the cap. I mean, that's the thing that yeah. people got to say. When, when you're playing the, the, the money game of the cap, that's what happens. You're stretching money out. You're, it's like a credit card payment, right? You got to mm -hmm. pay the bill, mm -hmm. but uh, Zeke's not getting that money. It's 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 dead money that, that sits there on the cap because you kind of you, you kind of spread it around. But you know, and Brian, you know, Jerry's winning his sold out games, media coverage, and number one sports franchise. Yeah, you can't argue. He's a businessman. Yeah, he's a, he's businessman. a businessman. And you can't argue the fact that that the Cowboys are the most uh you know valuable franchise. Mm -hmm. He turned what 140 million into nine point something billion. So uh I can't, you know, you know, I can't I can't hate the player, hate the game, but yeah. you know, I think he the thing is, in talking to getting the opportunity to speak to former players that you know that come on the show that 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 played in the Cowboys years during Jerry, I mean, to a man, they all say he wants to win. And mm -hmm. the thing I would say, and I was talking, I was talking, you know, my son and I, uh, we went up and watched some NCAA basketball with uh, Malik Rozier, played for the Hurricanes quarterback. His his uh, you know. Uh, business group had a had a little thing, so he invited us over. Had a great time. Got a chance to talk some draft, talk some football, talk some canes, but talk some cowboys. And you know, this team has been talented. I mean, they've won twelve games. They've been they were the number two seed. They were the number four seed. They were the number what five seed, whatever they were in the last three years. The the lack you can't blame Jerry for lack of talent. I'm just yeah, going to no, be that's right. That's we right. We can't sit there and say, oh, they did a shitty job. To me, it's between the ears with these guys. And I think that's where maybe the GM where I'd hold Jerry accountable is the type of player 
that you set up, but also the type of organization that you're putting out there. And it is a country club mentality mm -hmm. when you go to Dallas. It is the most beautiful facility mm -hmm. you could ever see. It's like I said, they almost need to go back to like Rocky Three, Club or Land, <laughs> and Rocky Four when Rocky had to go out to the the, the, the snow. And the the almost, yeah, you almost need to change the mentality because it is, you know, if you say, "Hey, man, it's this team is soft." Well, I look at you know, it's like Michael Irvin said one time, he said in an interview, his son came to him and said, hey, I want to play football. And so Michael Irvin said, what do you how, What level are you trying to get to? He goes, I want to play in the NFL. So he said, you want to play in the NFL? He said, yes. He said, well, I'm going to get you a flight. You're going to go back down to Fort Lauderdale and you're going to go live with family down there because in this house, in this mansion, yeah. You ain't, you ain't, the hunger ain't going to be there. You ain't, you ain't so, and that I think that's sometimes the mentality with Dallas. First-class organization. Yes, As sir. a fan, when you go to these games, and that's why I tell people, it is an experience. They yes, the, Everything's first-class, but every, it's, a, it's, it's almost like the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, hanging with Cowboys Nation and the Texas mm -hmm. Live and you're doing all this stuff. I mean, it, it is just a great experience. So I love that. That's what I love about it as a fan. Yeah. yeah. But I think as a player, they, they might need to toughen it up a little bit. Maybe, maybe yeah. not. That's just my opinion. It, it, it's all true. And all of us fans, we see it. If Jerry, if Jerry, he, Jerry wants to win. Okay. I want to win the lottery. Well, if you don't play, you can't win. And Jerry, you need to be, you need to get a GM, Jerry. Look at all these teams. None of them has said, we're going to go all in. But they're going all in. Philly went all in and got to the Super Bowl. 49ers went all in. Because during the season, they went and made those transactions. They did whatever it took by any means necessary. Jerry's like, I want to win, but no, ain't no but. I yeah. want to win by any means necessary. So I'm going to step aside and get a real GM because I don't have all the answers. And I know I don't have the strategic thinking that these other GMs have to bring in so we can start change, uh, doing a philosophy to get us there. But you know what? I want to win, but I'm not giving up the kitchen. I'm yeah. still going to be. You can't win that way. You can't win that way. And I think Jerry is the only owner, GM, cook, server. If he could be it, he'll be a player. He's the only one in the NFL doing that. You want to win, Jerry, step aside. Stay stay close. Step aside and get a GM. Or get a GM to sit alongside with you, a real GM. No, they got McClay. The they got McClay. I don't want yeah, to. I don't want to discredit one McClay. They're afraid of Jerry. They're afraid of Jerry. You yeah, know no. I mean? Yeah. No, I, I, think, I think the uh, – you know, when you when you you're a thousand percent right with Jerry, it's it's the I, I used to use this analogy as well. Is you know we all have when you're working in business, you're working anywhere. You always have a manager, right? And then you got yes. the owners. There's levels. Yes. There's a chain of command, right? And if I'm you know I'm the I'm the street level worker, and I can bypass my manager mm -hmm. and just go to the owner. And get my get my stuff done, or, or 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 air out my grievance, or do whatever. And I'm not worried about the ramifications of doing that, bypassing my manager. Right. That basically cuts the manager's legs from under him. That's and I think good. that is the problem in Dallas. And I I saw a comment: bad coaching the last year. I don't agree with that. No, I think I Mike McCarthy's a good coach, and I, I've seen what he's done with this team. Mm -hmm. Again, 36 wins is pretty damn impressive mm -hmm. playoff lack of playoff success for this team. That's the problem. And I, and, and it's hard for me to kill them because I think some of the teams that they lost to were better than them. I mean, that's yeah. just the reality of it. They lost in the road or this and that. The one that stings the most, obviously is the most recent one with, with green Bay, because yeah. Dallas was clearly the better team. They were unprepared that you want to throw on some coaching. I will get it, but I'm, I'm a, I, I'm just a, the mentality of player accountability. Yes. And it's it's easy to blame the coaches. It's easy to blame the owners. But at the end of the day, it, you got to start you got to quit pointing the finger and start pointing the thumb if you're a player, because it's got to be on you to make yourself better. It's got to be the thing I would say, too, with Dak. And I don't know. Obviously, he's had a very, you know, 
you know, some some hardship in his life. Obviously, mm-hmm. his mother, a his, lot of it. His brother committed suicide. I mean, he's got a lot of it's things. Made. You don't know what that does. What you know? Where is his psyche? Where is it? Because I, right. the thing I would it, it was talked about a little bit. I'm not going to get too in it to be a psychologist, but um, it, it it's like when the those tough moments. I don't really see that fire in him. It's almost right. like a like a lost look. Like it's like he looks at the board, he's looking up and there's, it's not like getting up. Remember like, and I hate to compare Aikman. I, I, yeah. I people get all mad when I do that, but I remember seeing Aikman would just get in the line. Like things ain't going back, get in the line. You guys yeah. need to get your shit together. You you know, sure did. And you, you've seen it from Mahomes. You've seen it from a lot of players, you know, right. Aaron Rodgers. You've seen it from a lot of these quarterbacks. I don't see that from day. It's time he just sits down. He's looking at his little, you know, the, the iPad and he's looking up at the screen. Right. He's looking down and it's just he has that lost look, and I, right. it, it could just be the way it looks. So again, I'm not holding yeah. it, but I just don't see that fire of like like when CD like they were they're having some issues, you know, uh-huh. right? The coach had to go over there. Dak didn't go over there. The right. coach didn't go over there. So right. I just I don't know. I don't. I, I just there's something missing when times when it becomes crunch time that I'm just not seeing. Yeah, and that's true. That's exactly right because the Starbucks. What's the, you know, you talk about leaders. Starbuck was a leader. Starbuck would go on that line and tell everybody, look, you need to do this. Everybody respect it. Aikman did the same thing. He'll walk up and down that line and he'll rip them apart. But he's not doing it because he's arrogant. He's doing it because his, he wants to win the game and he takes charge. That's the one aspect about that that he doesn't display or he doesn't have. And we are the most visible, the most recognize the most targeted team and franchise in NFL history. And Dak is the head, is the leader of the offense for that. So Dak's had the, the issue with his mother, his uh, brother, had that horrific ankle uh, injury. Dak catches hell from everybody in the world far more than any other quarterback in the NFL because he's the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And he is a human and all those those comments and all of that, eventually it's going to pile up. So nobody can say, well, this doesn't affect him. He's a professional. You could be a professional, but all that stuff does pile up. And, he, and I'm sure he thinks about it in the game. And I'm sure some games he wasn't all there because of all of those uh, issues and situations. But what he doesn't have is that resolve when he's on the sideline to focus totally on that game and say, I want to win this game by any means necessary. And when he walks up and down the sideline, everybody knows because they will follow Dak through to Mount Fuji if Dak yeah. comes out there with that mentality. He doesn't have that. And yeah. because Dak doesn't have it, we don't have anybody else on the team that has it. And yeah. if we had somebody else on the team that has it like that, Dak would come into place or that would be the, the beast that gets everybody rolling. If Dak as successful as we've been without that mentality. He can't just acquire that mentality overnight because it is not him. It's not in his character. So Dak is just going to have to be Dak and be the best he can be and try to let these distractions go off to the side and understand I'm with the Dallas Cowboys. That's why I'm going to get issues from the Cowboys fans and everybody, even if I just drop the ball one time. So I have to understand that comes with it. So just yeah. try to leave that distraction aside but and try slowly, slow increments of going up and down that sideline and not being afraid of offending somebody to tell them we need to get our act together. And don't worry about if somebody come in, well, Dak, you need to do it too. Then just say, yeah, I do too, but you need to get your butt up yeah. and we need to get this thing done because we're trying to win. We're trying to take it to the next level. If he can do that with increments, then he can develop a character and a routine where it becomes natural. But just to go in there and try to go all in on it and do that, it's not going to work because he's not that type of person. And see, it was just like when I was in the Air Force, our biggest issue was accountability. I don't want to hear excuses. You know, you understand you got troops and and your things to keep them healthy, keep them prepared, keep them trained, because one day we might have to go and use you in in war or conflict. But at the same time, son, you got to be a woman. You got to be accountable for yourself. I'm not dragging you along. You got to be accountable for yourself. And when you're not doing the right thing, uh, be accountable, ex- explain that you are, uh, straighten yourself up and move on. And if all of us are that way, then we know we can check ourselves. We don't have that with the Cowboys. It's the brand. It's a whole generation of ball now. It's a brand. It's all this other distraction stuff. 
the internet has, has gotten to a point to where that's their lives. Some yeah. of them are probably sitting on the bench, Mike, during the game thinking, yeah, after this, I got to get on there and I got to go. It's all brands. They're, they're all. That's it. So, yeah. But other teams are still succeeding in spite of that. And well, and the, th and the thing is, other players on other teams, let's not be naive. I, I hear the podcasting with Parsons. Other teams, they all do podcasts. All these players do on, on all these other teams. Yes. I mean, the Kelsey brothers do it. You know, the the, the linebacker Warren out, out, out uh, or, or uh, Warner out, out in San Francisco. To, every one of these players create a brand and, and, and they're doing it. Problem is with the Cowboys, that's all you're going to hear. That's what you yeah. hear in the media. That's what you hear today. So you have to understand that going into it. But I would say, you know, just a couple things in the chat. I don't know what Sean was talking about, what part of the conversation. Um, but we're talking about accountability and, and Dak. And I don't know if he's saying that's coaching. No, I mean, that. You either you're either a leader yourself, yeah. like we talked about, or you're not. A coach that's ain't right. gonna bring that out of you. I mm -hmm. mean, at least that's my opinion. And in the in the sports that I've played, never at a professional level, let's be honest. But in the sports that I've played, you know, it was up to me to, to do it. And it doesn't that's have right. to be the best player. Doesn't have to be the leader. I wasn't the best uh, wrestler on my team, but the younger guys did look up to me and respected me right. uh, as, as a teammate and and as a leader. Of, of that team. So you don't necessarily have to be the number one guy, you, you right. know, that doesn't make just because you're the best guy doesn't make you the leader of the team. You know, there's a lot of different things that, that, that go into it. Like I would say the linebacker from San Francisco, it's, it's Warner, right? Hopefully I'm not. Yeah, missing yeah, Warner, Warner. Um, he's not the best player uh -huh. on, on San Francisco. He's probably, you know, maybe sixth or between six and 10, but he's a leader. I mean, That's you right. see it on the field, there's make no mistake about That's it. Right. He's That's a leader right. on the team. Ken Norton Jr. was a leader on That's that right. Cowboys defense. He wasn't the best player on defense. Mm -hmm. You know, he was up there, but he wasn't the best player. So that's where I'm saying you don't have to be the best. But I don't know if the Cowboys have enough leaders on this team. Uh, another question about uh, Frank, the Cowboys came tailgate party. Um, we got to see when the schedule comes out. Uh, yeah. We did it for the home opener last year. It, it kind of worked out well. It was fun, you know, the whole thing. So, uh, it all depends on who they play. Like if, if we open uh, with the commanders or with the Buccaneers or something, like, I don't know if I'd be going, you know, I don't know if yeah. we're going to go all tailgate for that. We try, we want, I mean, that tailgate, the home opener was Aaron Rodgers coming back there. I mean, there's a lot of drama built in. It didn't work out because Aaron Rodgers got hurt, yeah. but um, Kelly and I will get together. We just got to figure out the schedule and really who they play. Cause um, with my season tickets, there's a pecking order and uh, my son and my wife, they get the first dibs on 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 who we play, so I got to default to them before I get to give some of mine away to to uh, the Cowboys Cave to have a party. So it is, yeah. what it, but we'll have a whatever we do. We're gonna have a good time. There's no doubt yeah. about. It. We'll have some yeah. fun. We'll have some fun. So, um, but yeah, and Dak could get better. It would be in a it'd be better. Yeah, you could be. I mean, there's things he could do. Um, let's but, see. You know, Dak, is, would... Dak is a great leader. Uh, well, I guess uh, I God, we're going we're gonna to respectfully disagree. And, mm -hmm. that, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm a fan like you. Uh, we have two different things. Um, Mike McCarthy is not, you know, I I seen him go. The, what, what, what tells me about a coach, when his backup was in there, they went four and one. The mm -hmm. days that we had Tyron Smith leave a game, we'd get our asses kicked up and down the field for one player, one left tackle yeah. after the game. The J under Jason Garrett, we get destroyed. Mike McCarthy, I've never seen it be an issue. We lost Tyron. We lost Tyler. We lost Biotis. We lost all these linemen. We lose players, and it's never affected us in the game. I saw him take a Green Bay Packer team into a heavy-favored Cowboys stadium with their backup quarterback and absolutely shred us. Mm -hmm. So I have no issues with McCarthy uh, as, as being a head coach. That being said, um, if they don't make a run, a deep run this year. So the question was asked with McCarthy go. I'm sure he will. I'm sure yeah. he will. Because at some point you cannot keep doing the same thing and getting the same result. Uh, that's, you know, that's a definition of whatever they call it, stupid or, or whatever they call it. Insanity. Insanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would say the same with Dak. I mean, if, if they run it back again with Dak and they get bounced in the playoffs in the first round, I mean, how long do you want to continue to do that? You want to be the Bengals? You know, yeah. Marvin Lewis got to the playoffs mm -hmm. every single year, but, you know, ended up, uh, you know, getting bounced in the first or second round. All the time. But see what, what in, after the Green Bay game and up to the day, when I talk to friends or some other people, 
you know, TikTok and they be commenting about it and they always say Dak, Dak, Dak. And I'm saying, folks, did you watch the Green Bay game? Did you watch the Green Bay game? Green Bay scored 30, 30 something, 35 something points on the defense. On the defense. Dak yes. gave up a pick six and then he set him up with an interception at the end, get a touchdown. But Dak still brought us back within what, like a touchdown, eight points or something. The defense lost that game. Dan Quinn, the players, when you got receivers standing back 10 yard line, nobody on them, numerous times catching it. And then they, they scoring. It was a defense, but everybody, and I said, am I watching something that everybody else doesn't see? I saw the Green Bay game, the defense, wasn't even on the field. We lost because the defense just flopped. Period. Yeah. But everybody said, "Oh, Dak didn't do this. Dak, Dak threw a pick six. Okay, threw a pick six. Dak threw another. Trip, got a touchdown. Okay, stop. Facts. How many points did Dak score? Bring us back to score. What did the defense do in the meantime? Defense never could get a stop. That's why I no, talked about that yesterday. Never. And that's why it's it's it, it you got to blame both. But Dak, you know, he started bad. But every time the Cowboys are, we're back in the game. The yeah. defense got shredded again, and yep. and and the Packers went and scored again. So I agree. I think you know that game. It's got to go. It's back and forth. I mean, blame goes to Dak. Blame goes to the defense. And I and I question what Quinn. You know, if you want to talk about coaching. I question what Ken, Quinn's philosophy was during that game. Yes. Because I've never seen wide receivers so wide open. And you're running, you know, you're you're not playing man. You're running. I mean, the the, the, the receivers, it's not like they were going up against top-tier receivers either. Um, right. So it, it was a very odd game plan by Quinn. Some say uh, could be, uh, 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 what do they call Fixed. Fixed to try and make us lose. I don't know, but um, – the, the thing is, is with the Cowboys and what I typically see a lot is is early on, you can kind of see how this team's going. And what I said about the the defense, I think our defense, I think we all got kind of sucked into it. And, we, you know, this could be a, a great defense and this and that. And I think they got exploited in many ways during big games when mm -hmm. teams punched them in the mouth and the offense didn't jump on them. Look at Buffalo. Look at Miami. Miami. Look at Arizona, look at San Francisco, look at Green Bay, and and then look at the Chiefs. Now take Mahomes out of it, but just Mahomes did nothing in that Super Bowl for three quarters. Mm -hmm. But that defense kept him within one possession, kept sure it did. tight. It was a defensive struggle. Both teams are here. We our defense couldn't do that if Dak and the offense wasn't hot. It was gonna be they were gonna get steamrolled. Yeah. Have it happened against Buffalo. It didn't happen so much against Miami, but there was that point where our, our offense wasn't doing much and the defense kind of got rolled a little bit. Arizona it did. Uh, San Francisco it did. Mm -hmm. Green Bay it did. So you're counting on your offense to always be a 40-point offense, and that you can't do that week That's in and right. week out. When the playoffs happen, everything gets tighter. Everything gets pressure even more. Yes. So you're not going to see these 45-point games and this right. and that. So – the defense had to step up and never did. If, if if they got if the offense jumped ahead, and that's why so many people wanted Cowboys to have the ball first in every game. Mm -hmm. If the offense jumped ahead, the defense it gave them an air of confidence. They pinned back, and I think Quinn, if you look at him, he was better, you know, with his game plan, always with the lead. And if you look at Quinn too, another thing. That's why I'm not sad to see him go against the coaches, offensive coaches that were on his staff. You had the one in Miami, obviously San Francisco with Shanahan. You got uh, the the Green Bay coach, and there were, I think there was one other one. He's uh -oh. Owen, he never beat him. He's Same never goal. beat him. He's never beat him as a, as a defensive coordinator against their offense. Why is that? You know, so that's what I'm saying is he he's I we ain't gonna miss him too much. I don't. Yeah. And when I watch the game, when I watch the Cowboys play, when the game's over, you know. I've never been one to run straight. I say, "Oh, that's Dak," now, because it, it, it's it's he's. It seems like that's the lowest hanging fruit for everybody to blame the quarterback. People, the quarterback doesn't play defense. The quarterback doesn't play kickoffs. The quarterback doesn't do that. But you know, I wish our fans worldwide would look at the game and see. Yeah, Dak's gonna have some accountability, but really look at where we had our issues. And in that Green Bay game, 
it was the most obvious. I don't care if you were a fan and you were six years old. It was more most obvious to anybody that our defense blew that game. That was the biggest blowout we've had and during the season and at home. So Dak had – yeah, Dak didn't play well, but I looked at it and I said, well, Dak is bringing us back. If the defense can give us two stops, we might be able to correct this but we didn't, and then everybody on Doug, 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 and then Dak's hearing all that, and everybody else, and then Lawrence comes out with what he got to say, and I'm sitting there saying, man, we had the opportunity this one time right here to take it deep, and we didn't. And now this season, we got, what, seven, nine players gone, or, or six or seven, eight, nine players gone, and, okay, not all of them were top-tier players, but they were part of what kept us 12-5 and five last year. They were part of the little glue here, the little glue there that kept us in the game. How – is that going to affect us now that all of those are gone? And th that's experience, whether they're top players or not. They're experience. Because sometimes you just need players that are right here. You don't yeah. always need players. Up. You just need players that are right we here. We have enough stars. I mean, yeah. we have enough of those elite. We have an elite guy at almost every position except running back and linebacker, really. And, we really, and then what you really need is all those fillers. People don't understand. The lead guys aren't the ones that really win the game. It's those lunch bucket guys that are right there in the middle. You're not going to be here. You're not going to be here, but they're always going to be consistent right here. And we had a bunch of them to leave. So when that's pulled out, whether people say, oh, well, he wasn't that great, he wasn't that great. Well, he was part of the 12 and 5. He was yeah. part, even without a true linebacker, they were still part of the 12 and 5 and got us there. So now, how is that going to affect us because we didn't replace but one with one person that has experience in the NFL? So now all those other pieces that we lost that if you put them together, they make great player, but individually might not be great, but they were great enough to keep us consistent to get 12 and five. Now, how is that going to affect us? And then I looked down the road. I said, OK, well, the free agency is gone. We don't have anybody. We didn't pick up anybody during the season. We didn't pick up Henry. Now we go through the draft. Is there a possibility that um, when we go through uh, uh, the spring training, I mean, go through um, the training, training camp, camp and all that. that somebody else we can pick up on the um, uh, 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 on the side or we can bring him? And I'm thinking, wait a minute, but we got to have money. If we don't have money. They, got, they have the money. They, they, have the money. they, they, got, money. they got the money. But money, money is no object if they if they restructure. So, and they, and they, 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 they're, they're going to have to get CD's contract done soon. They're going to have to get yeah, it done. Yes, and then, Micah. And uh, Mike, I would do next year. I mean, they could do it now, but they would really save money on 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 uh, on CDs. And I just gotta get, I got to give love to Frank. I left this up so much because one of my favorite pictures. I mean, if this isn't uh, uh, the the great time that you have at hanging with Cowboys Nation, you know, Frank's got the got me in the middle. He's over there, and you got Kelly. I mean, that is just happiness. Hopefully, that was a victory. Now, I, know, I haven't seen Cowboys lose a game in in two years. That, I, that these eyes have seen. I think it's been two years since, uh, I think it was opening day when they lost to Washington, whatever year that was. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, but that's some happy people right there, and that's the good time that I expect to have uh, this year. But but no, and, and we touched on it a lot. No running game. The running game didn't help. Yep. So yep. I'm not, I, you know, listen, it ain't all falling on Dak on that <laughs> offense. You need to have a running game. I, I preached it for – all last year, I said it's going to bite him in the ass, and sure enough, it did. Yep. Um, but yeah, so anyway, hey, it's getting over an hour. We're gonna we're gonna start wrapping this up. But I do want to say, if you hadn't hit that like button, hit. Make sure you hit it. Doesn't take nothing. Cost you nothing. Make sure you hit the subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you keep it tuned. We've got a lot of great shows coming up. So we've got Jay Tuck, the Draft Wizard, and Malik Rozier. The Miami Hurricane, you know, former Miami Hurricane quarterback coming into the cave. We're going to talk some college football and draft. Really, the college players going in the draft. So it's really yeah. going to be kind of like our draft show, uh, but we'll get a college flavor. And Malik, he said an interesting thing to me, and that's why you saw him on my draft board. He said the one quarterback, if I was going to get, if I was going to draft a quarterback for the Cowboys later, it'd be Sam Hartman. He said, don't look so much at Notre Dame. Oh, yeah. He said, look what he did at Wake Forest. Uh, against some top tier teams, and he thinks he'd be a good fit for the Cowboys as kind of a a young quarterback to groom, if, you know, for down the road or whatever. If they were going to, and I think you should draft a quarterback a year. We also have Crawford Kerr. He was offensive lineman in the Landry going into the Jimmy Johnson era. Absolutely hilarious. He he's funny as heck. Kevin Gogan talked about him on our show, so I reached out to him. He actually lives around me, so he may actually come into the cave. We may have a a former Cowboy in the Cowboys cave doing that. 
We also got George Teague on on the horizon, getting him back in the cave. Uh, we talked about doing a, a collaboration to, and show there, and I've got some other things in the works that that we're going to be uh, working on. I reached, I met Eric Rett. I, I know you know Eric Rett. Yeah, from, yeah. From the Florida Gator Florida, days, Florida I had Gator. him him come in the cave, talk a little. He was a two time uh, wrestling champion where I grew up. He was a few years ahead of me. Mm, uh, I but I remember seeing his banners at MacArthur High School. So talk a little bit about maybe what he thinks about the running back, back position today and how it's devalued and what his thoughts are. Yeah. So we got a lot of stuff going on in the cave. So if you guys haven't hit that like, subscribe, share, all that stuff, again, it doesn't cost you a nickel to do it. It just supports the channel, which allows us to get more content out to you, get the word out and all that. Yeah. So. I hate being a salesman, but, you know, I'm a salesman, so I just got to do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, closing comments, uh, Greg, what's uh, what do you hope? I always say, you know, hopefully I see you next Sunday. So if I if I saw you next Sunday, what do you what's going what would make you feel a little bit better this week? If something were to happen, what do you want? Well, do I don't because of the money and because of where we're, I don't know if anything will happen except. If Jerry decides to trade somebody, and if he trades somebody pretty big to get a, a, a more on the salary cap, then who is he going to go out and get if he uses that to trade somebody other than just just a uh, draft? So I'm hoping that some kind of miraculous, strategic, top secret, boom, we're coming out the cave. From the Dallas Cowboy organization, we know y'all were worrying about what we were doing. This is why we've been quiet. Boom. We're going to do this, and we're getting this and getting this. And then I can say, oh, okay, there is a method to the madness. But if I don't hear that, it's the same old, same old. We're just relying on the draft. And then my next expectation to be during training camp, who do we put on the practice squad? Who do teams release? Did we get them to come help us? Because that's our last opportunity to get experience is yeah. during the training camps when they make the cuts or during the training camp when they cut early and somebody goes out on the on the wire and if we can pick them up or something and it's like oh, oh they got rid of them and dallas got them because we might be able to get people on the cheap that way but if we don't do anything between now and then my only next my, my last hope is training camp are we going to pick up any experience when people get cut from other team or in the meantime, is Dallas working on some kind of uh, uh, Oppenheimer <laughs> to, 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 to just come out and say, boom, and the sports world goes crazy. Dallas trades so-and-so, picks up so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so, so there was a method to the madness, and now we're showing up. That's what I'm yeah. expecting. Yeah, I would say – um, Frankie probably had the best comment. He'd love to see Jerry trade Stephen Jones. So that would be nice. Trade him to Philly. Uh, that would be even better. They they got all our other scrubs. So go ahead and go ahead and make that happen. I, that that would be good. But um, I, I I said it on Thursday's show. I was hoping to show up uh, today with either Dak getting an extension or 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 CD. I just think I, I hate distractions. I really do. Yeah. So I and I know it's like how the hell are you a Cowboys fan? That's what they live for. I know. But that's why yeah. I hate. That's my that's my pet peeve with the Cowboys. I, I love to hate it, but it's uh that's the part. So I, I'm hoping they get something done to just kind of get this thing settled or mm -hmm. come out and just say, hey look, you know, things have been unacceptable. These guys, it's time to prove it. So Dax on a one year, you prove it deal just like, you know, just like McCarthy and just like everyone else. And and that's yeah. it. Put some pressure on them, see what happens. Uh, so we'll see. You know, that's what I'm that's what I'm hoping. Let's see. Uh Rocket Ismail. Uh, uh, I don't know what that's for, but I do like Rocket Ismail. Something needs to happen before the draft. I agree. Yes. Frank, a uh, question is a uh, training camp. From my understanding, I've never been to 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 the training camp there um, out in California. What I heard is like the earlier days are better for autographs, and then it gets kind of crazy. So I would just say, Frank, hit me up. I might be able to hook you up with something if you ever decide to go to training camp. I thought about it, but being in California, that's just a, it's too far. I don't like traveling yeah, across yeah. country and you know, your boys got only so many budget dollars that are allocated to my Cowboys. I'd rather go to the game. So, yeah. um, 
So anyway, uh, but if you do, if you're serious about going, hit me up. I might be able to hook you up with something or at least some help. You know, uh, I've been at Oxnard several times with my job before I re after I retired from Air Force and I was still working for Department of Defense. But I and and I traveled out there to Oxnard, right there in the city, several times. But it was always after football season, before training camp. So I never got a chance to go see him. And I, I'd say maybe one time I'll go to one of the training camps just to see how it is. But uh, it's not a big priority for me. Well, I would say this, too, is I saw it and I got lost. My man Bobby, he's an Eagle fan. So, you know, I, I expect this. Lucky to make the wild card. Uh, that, yeah, I doubt that would happen. And I would say the same. I would laugh if someone said the Eagles as well. I think you got seven teams making the playoffs. Yeah. Cowboys, the way I look at it, the Cowboys still have the better, best quarterback and one of the best quarterbacks in the NFC. Uh, they still got the best receiver or one of the best receivers in the NFC. They still got the best pass rusher or one of the best pass rushers in the NFC. I still think their cornerback situation, they still got one of the best tandems, if not the best. So they have too much talent at the most important positions not to make the playoffs. Do I say they're a Super Bowl contender? I got to see what happens. And yeah, I would I say, they for, really, I mean, they got Kellen Moore as your offensive coordinator. I wouldn't be doing backflips. I wouldn't be uh, buying, uh, getting a hotel t uh, reservations to go to the Super Bowl, my my man. I lived that. I lived that life for many years. It's a life you don't want to live. And you come check back with me uh, at the end of the season. You say, "Damn it, Mike, you were right. That is not the life I want to live." So <laughs> make sure you guys do that. And hey, I'd be remiss. Get a super chat from the lunatic man. Appreciate the love. Go Cowboys. It's another way to support the channel. And, and again, I never asked for it, but I do appreciate it because, you know, getting all this software and you guys can see upgraded the software. I do it. I was telling Greg before I do it because I love it. I don't do yep. it for money. Uh, it's something I enjoy uh, as you get a little, little later on in life. When your kids get older, you try and find hobbies and things to do. They don't do baseball. They're not playing football. They're not doing all that. So I got to find something to do. So um, this is it. This is what you got to live with. So. Anyway, if you guys ever want to donate to support it, I do appreciate it, but I don't ask for it. Uh, yeah, I would like to see the Cowboys go back to Texas for training camp. If they did that, I would. I yes. would, I would yes. go to training camp. Yeah. Yes. I don't like going to California, just be honest. It's too yeah. far. Um, but, you know, um, and mm -hmm. talking about why you do the show, that's why I, I like being on this show because you do it, you do it because you have the passion for the Cowboys not doing it just because it's something to do. And that's in that way, because I have a passion for the Cowboys. So when I'm talking to somebody else who has a passion for the Cowboys, you know, you just feel like a pig in slop. I mean, just, <laughs> instead of just talking to somebody who just wants to talk about the Cowboys. So that's why I really enjoy it. That's I yeah. really enjoy well, we it. Love, I mean, we love having you. And I, and I said this before, Greg, and I sincerely mean it. You have your family. So you have an open invitation. So if, even if you, you know, life gets busy for me and you say, hey, Mike, man, hit me that link so I can jump in. I want to hop in tonight. You have yeah. any show Monday, Thursday, Sunday, anytime you want to uh, you want to hop in. All you awesome. got to do is just shoot me a message. Hey, man, I'm home tonight. I want to pop it. And you can pop in for 10 minutes. You can hang yeah. out the whole time, whatever, you know, if something on your mind or you, you're like, hey, I just want to be able to have a link. But if you say something that pisses me off or I got to get I'm, <laughs> I'm fired up about something, I want to be able to have a quick, act, you know, access to get in. Just let me know, man. I, I'll send you that link every time. It's no problem. So but yeah. And, and the Cowboys, the last thing I'll just say that, yeah, the, the, the schedule is going to be it's going to be tough. Um I'm one of these. I'm not happy with where they're at with the roster. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to panic. I'm not going to hit the panic button. I'm not going to yeah. put our record out. And and what are we in April? I'm not going to say what our record is, and it's not even April. Um, so I'm going to wait and see. I'm not happy about what I've seen, but maybe there's a method to the madness. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there is. I just don't know. I think obviously a receiver in the draft. I think if a receiver came available, I, I don't disagree. Um, so anyway. Um, and you know, we've got some surprise in the drafts, like the CD Lambs, the Michael Parsons, and a few others. Remember when those drafts were coming up, and you're thinking, Oh, he'll he won't be available by the time we get there, he won't be. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like, Oh man, we got Trayvon D. Oh, we got CD Lamb. Oh, we got Michael Parsons. So I, I can see us getting somebody in this draft, I don't know who, and we can say, Oh man, you mean he was available and we got him? You know, that's what I'm hoping in the draft we get because those folks were instant successes. Yeah, they were no. instant success. No, and and everybody knows that. So, and then we get to, we do something different. I just I don't feel it, but I'm just thinking they must be behind closed because they are so quiet. Mike, 
Dallas has been so quiet. And I'm saying they got to be sitting back doing something, but they don't want to release it just yet because they don't want to trigger other teams. And if they come out with a bombshell, I'm like, you know what? I felt it, but I was, I just wanted to see. Uh, I hope you're right. The only thing I think they've been doing is sleeping. Maybe they've been on that yacht on vacation. And, and, and uh, uh, you know, last thing, I have no issues if they trade back. I, I think you could trade back and get a couple more picks if there's value there and there's there's opportunity. I'm never, I'm never against trading back, and I'm not against trading up if there's a guy that you definitely want and you got right. your sight set up. I mean, they have, like I said, they have to hit home runs. They got to hit triples and home runs. Um, yeah. They've got to, they've got to come out with some starters and some impact players to to help this team out. So. I think um, I think they got to do it. But anyway, hey guys, I appreciate it. It's going to be about that time. We got to we got to get back to the fam. But but again, Greg, it's always great having you on. We definitely appreciate it. Everyone in the chat. I mean, two hundred and thirty people tuning in on all different platforms on a Sunday morning. Man, it's that's you know there was times on here I had five people. So I do appreciate it. It's grown over the years. I love doing it. Make sure you guys hit that like button on your way out. There's nothing wrong with showing a little love. Hit that subscribe. Again, Cuts by Jones. You see it here. I always got the hat handy. If you guys need any custom cuts, badass stuff, man, you can hit my man Fred up. He does beautiful work. Uh, and and it's, it, it, you know, any way to enhance your Cowboys cave or it could be yep. any other team. I might have to get him to make me something for the U. I got to get, I got to get some Miami stuff going. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway. I, I got quite a bit of cuts, boy. And every time uh, we did that FaceTime with my friends with the visit cut and they did the FaceTime in the garage. And I told Cuts, yeah, I want that. And then, then I, Cuts will remember. I, I said, man, I got to get I said, I got to get off this FaceTime because Cuts, before you know it, I'll be ordering everything you got in there. <laughs> nah, I mean, he does great work. And I mean, like, he's even a better person than, than the work he does. So, yeah, he you know, and supporting the, the Cowboys Nation, if you can do it, that's always the best thing. So we'll let you guys roll, man. I appreciate it. Uh, let me find my ent- my exit. So you guys have a go, man. Take care. See you. All right. Give me somebody that's hungry. Give me somebody that's hungry. I 